Everybody wants a hero. Everybody needs a friend. Mm, a shoulder to lean on. Everybody needs a helping hand. Well, you ought to try Jesus. Said he's just a prayer away. See, he can make your burdens light. Turn your midnight. In the day, yeah. he's so much more than a healer. When you're feeling kind of down, said he's more than able. I know, I know he can turn your life around. Yeah. Welcome to tonight's Bible class. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace giving thanks to you. Thank you for your many wonderful blessings. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come out and study another portion of your word, oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to forgive us of our sins rather than by our words, thoughts, and deeds. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you uh, for everything you have done and thank you for everything that you continue to do. For this is our prayer in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And tonight's Bible class teacher. Hello and good evening, family and friends, saints of God, lovers of the truth. Welcome to Bible study on this Wednesday night right here at the South Union Church of Christ. Now, family, we give God all of the glory. We give him all of the praise for alone. He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The Lord is still great and great led to be praised. We thank God for blessing us with life. We thank God for allowing us to arise this morning, to see the bright light of a brand new day, to hear the voices of family and friends. We thank God for blessing us to be here at this moment and at this time to receive with meekness his engrafted word that is still able to save all of our souls, amen? Now, we pray that you've had a very productive day, and we know that uh, God has kept you. He's covered you all along the way, and so we thank God for bringing us over. We thank God for taking us over the obstacles of the day. How many people had a trying day today? Amen. Drop a line into the live chat. If you've had a trying day, if you had a difficult day, you, you, God had to work through some things and he empowered you to make it through your challenges and to make it past your adversity. And if you're here, I want to declare and decree upon your life that you are still more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So let us never grow weary in well-doing because we know that we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Amen. Persevere, keep pushing, and uh, give it to God because God is always going to take care of his own. Amen. Now, to my brothers and sisters, the superlative saints of the South Union Church of Christ, you already know what time it is. Oh, how sweet it still is on a Wednesday night to be a child of the King. <laughs> Listen, if you have your Bibles, if you have your electronic devices, why don't you open them up at this time, navigate over, meet us or beat us. Romans, the ninth chapter. Romans, the ninth chapter. Ladies and gentlemen, let's focus our attention. Romans 9 and 21. Verse 21. The Bible reads, Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. 
What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Family, we want to use for a thought, theme, and thrust on tonight, the alphabet of believers. The alphabet of believers. Family, we have already uh, discovered and uncovered that uh, God thinks well of his children. And we're still uh, chugging away toward the finish line of this study, the alphabet of believers. Now, since God thinks well of us, uh, he employs every letter of the alphabet to emphasize uh, an important characteristic or attribute among his children. And I believe that when we study the word of God and we really see how much intricate detail the Lord has placed upon all of us and within our lives, that it will cause us to grow closer with the Lord, to walk closely with the Lord, and to have a renewed sense of dedication unto the Lord. Amen. Because when I know how my father feels about me, it gives me hope to know that I can make it even through tomorrow. Let's dig into the text. Before us, we have the letter V. The letter V. We are vessels of mercy. Now, Paul, when he writes this letter in the ninth chapter, he's writing to primarily two groups of people uh, that comprise this Rome church. Uh, and that is Jews and Gentiles, because you had a mixed multitude of people in the church there at Rome. And he wants the Jews to know that you're not better than the Gentiles and the Gentiles to know that you aren't any better than the Jews. Now, the Jews, of course, God's chosen people. He created uh, an ethnic group. He created Israel because there was not a people uh, of God until God created Israel. And when he created Israel, they were God's chosen people. But now he says, Paul makes it clear uh, that uh, Israel, even being God's chosen uh, people, this does not prohibit God on showing mercy to whom he will show mercy on. So God wants all men saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's why he sent his only begotten son, not just to save a group of people or a segment of people, but to save the entire world. Amen. So Paul says, uh, God wants you saved Jews and God wants the Gentiles saved as well. Now, there are vessels of dishonor and a vessel of honor. Now, the vessel of dishonor, uh, this might be a vessel that is marred. This might be a vessel uh, that is cracked. This might be a vessel uh, that has some kind of defect in it. The vessel of honor is the finished product, the intended work of the potter. And uh, the vessel of honor stands before uh, on public display as God's public intention of a private want, wish, and will to make that vessel glorious. Are you following what I'm saying? But although some looked at the Gentiles as being vessels of dishonor and as the Jews as vessels of honor, God wants to save all mankind. Are you with me? God wishes to save all mankind. And so we cannot select whom God will have mercy on. Uh, that's an important concept because sometimes we want to control God. You know, God, you save this person because they are more like me. But God's not necessarily saving people more like me because I could be wrong. Talk to me and hear somebody. We just assume that the way we are is the right way to be. Maybe God wants to save somebody who doesn't look like me. <laughs> Amen. Because it's his sovereign selection. Are you following what I'm saying? Um, God is not a racist God. He's going to save black, white, red, yellow, brown. He's going to save all men who obey him. Amen. All men who obey him 
will be saved. I cannot do the selecting of salvation for the Lord. Because if that's the case, God ceases from being God and now I'm running the show. No, no, no. God is going to save those according to his mercy, according to his grace, according to his sovereign will. And we who have put Christ on in baptism are vessels of mercy. Now, what does it mean to be a vessel? Now, a vessel is something that is made, something that is constructed, something that is taken, um, if you will, out of uh, unformed matter, matter that just exists, but then through creative processes is crafted into a vessel of renown. Now, a vessel, container, something physical, something that holds maybe water or another product. We are vessels that hold what? Mercy. Now, someone says, how can we hold mercy? We hold mercy in, a, in as much as God has poured mercy into our lives because he's choosing to save us. So as I walk around, I have to literally see myself as a vessel of mercy because I know what God has done for me. So I don't look down upon my brother or my sister, whether it be by creation or whether it be by recreation. I don't look down on anyone because I'm a vessel of mercy. In other words, God has poured mercy into my life. And so I carry mercy everywhere I go. Because had God not been merciful toward me, I wouldn't be here today. Amen? And that's the proper outlook I need to have as God's child. That uh, God has saved me by his mercy. Not by my righteousness. Not by my keeping the commandments so closely. But God has saved me by his mercy. So I carry mercy all along the way. Wherever I go, I, I just carry mercy for other people. I share it because God shared it with me, right? This world, just think about it. This world would be a much better place if our neighbors, our uh, family, our friends, everyone, strangers, we didn't even know. But if everybody carried themselves as vessels of mercy, then I'm considering your needs, you're considering my needs, I'm, I'm treating you as if I'd want someone to treat me, right? Wouldn't have all of this strife, wouldn't have all of this contention, wouldn't have all of this fighting and warring, wouldn't have all of this violence in the land because I'm gonna treat what you have the way I would want you to treat what, what I have, right? We're vessels of mercy. I believe that we forget many times just who we are. We are vessels of mercy. God has poured mercy in our lives and we ought to pour it out for others. Amen. The child of God understands that. And then the child of God also understands that uh, as he distributes or she distributes mercy to others, we must remain a worshiper of God. Amen. A worshiper of God. Follow me to John chapter four. John chapter four. The verse is 24. God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, family, we all worship something. Amen. We all worship something. But the question is, are we worshipers of God? Are we true worshipers of God. Now, to be a true worshiper suggests that uh, we have God as our object in our lives. Amen? God is the object. So we're worshiping God. Um, we're wired to worship, family. All of mankind is wired to worship. Now, we may not all worship God, but we do all worship something. And the issue many times comes in that we worship the wrong things. Worship should be designated 
and affiliated only toward God. As a matter of fact, we are told not to worship angels. Amen. We are told not to put any God before the most high. Amen. Because worship is something that is reserved only for God and God alone. So my passion um, to please, if you will, because when you worship, you have a passion to please. So my passion to please should be toward God to thank him from whom all blessings flow, not to place my importance, not to place my passions on other things because these other things didn't make me so they can't break me. Talk to me and hear somebody. Many times, let's dig into this. Many times we are broken. And the reason that we're broken many times, in many ways, in many instances, is because we've placed too much value in the wrong things. And when we've worshiped the wrong thing, the wrong thing will break us. Amen? Oh, come on. Talk back to me here now. We've worshiped the wrong things. Sometimes we can worship family. And then when family breaks our heart, we're broken for real because we put too much emphasis in that area. And, and, and I don't want to say too much as in don't uh, put emphasis on family because we want to put emphasis on family. But if we put anything on the level with God, that's too much. Are you with me? A man will let us down. When we've worshipped family, I know sometimes we get wrapped up. We worship our family. We worship our spouses. Amen. Come on, talk back to me now. Don't get quiet now. <laughs> we worship our children. You ever seen that happen? You ever seen people worship their spouse or worship their children? And, uh, you know, holding them up so high? That's dangerous, family. That's dangerous because when that person breaks our heart, it can destroy our whole world if we're not careful. Let us not worship our children. Let us not worship our spouses. Let us not worship our jobs. How many people have seen where the job was worshiped, then we lose it and we feel like we've lost it all. People go to drastic measures and create violence, come back on the workplace, want to shoot people and all of that kind of nonsense because they worship their identity was tied to their worship and they worship the wrong thing. Come on, talk back to me, somebody. That's a word. That's a word. Our identity is tied to our worship and what we worship. And if we don't worship God and we worship the wrong thing, our identity is not tied in God, it's in tied into the wrong thing. And the next thing you know, when that goes south or sour, we've lost it all. And it's because we put that on a level with God and it was never intended to be, to be put and placed on that level with God. Amen. My job is not on the level with God. My family is not on the level with God. My friends, not on the level with God. Not even my thoughts. Amen. Not even my thoughts should be on the level with God. Because when I do that, I'm setting myself up for disappointment and ultimately could be destruction. God wants true worshipers. One more letter on tonight. One more letter on tonight. And then we're going we're gonna to conclude this study. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, turn there with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, let's look at verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, the Bible reads, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, underscore that, and such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Verse 12, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. 
All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. Ooh, there's some teaching in this text, family, but I'm going to try to chew off as much as we can chew <laughs> for this current time. We are X something. That's the letter X, but it's also E X. We are all X somethings. Amen. All X something. Now, what does it mean to be an ex something? It means that we've all had a past. Talk to me and hear somebody. We've all had a past. We all have situations that we've had to encounter where we didn't always measure up to where we should have been in the first place. So I've been through something. You've been through something. We've been through sin. We have dillied and dallied in sin. Amen. We know something about sin. Let us not forget as children of God, we know something about sin. But the Bible says, and you were, but you've been washed. <laughs> you were, that's the X, you were. And if we're honest about it, sometimes we may not be so much X. <laughs> Come on, talk to me and hear somebody. <laughs> yeah, but we are X liars. Ex cheats, ex fornicators, ex effeminate, ex murderers, ex drunkards. It's right here in the text. We are ex, but we have to come out of that lifestyle or those lifestyles and embrace the Christian walk with the Lord. Amen. The Bible says that we're not going to inherit heaven and the kingdom of God if we live in ungodly ways and practice ungodly things and never make a change in our lives. Amen. It's right here in the text. Such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified. You are justified. You to be washed is to be cleaned. To be sanctified is to be preserved. To be justified is to be presented. Oh, come on. Talk back to me. Somebody. We've been washed, amen? So we've been cleansed. We've been forgiven. Yeah, that's the term I need. We've been forgiven. To be washed, you, you've been forgiven. Your sins have been remitted. To be sanctified, you're being preserved right now, amen? God preserves us in the church. That's why the church is very important. Don't you let someone tell you that the church is not important and your coming and assembling with the saints is not important. Don't you let someone lead you down that path of destruction. We need to gather with like-minded individuals who are all headed to the same place. We're aiming for the same thing and that's heaven, right? So there's a benefit of study. Yeah, there's a benefit of fellowship. We need it. We're designed as humans to operate and function that way. Amen. And not only that, but family, I thank God. It's right here in the text. You're justified. Now, what does it mean to be justified? To be presented legally. It's a legal representation to be declared as if you didn't do it at all. You're guilty. There's enough evidence to prosecute. But the Lord God issues you, if you will, the closest understanding could be rendered pardon. You're pardoned from that. You're guilty, but he covers you. You're guilty, but he keeps you. You're guilty, but he saves you. And he pardons you from the penalty 
of what you really work so hard to deserve. Amen. So the Lord has pardoned us. And that ought to give me joy and give me hope and allow me to understand and realize that the Lord wants my soul to be saved in the end. Amen. We all are ex somethings. We came out of something. And if we haven't come out, we need to hurry up and come out. Amen. The alphabet of believers. Uh, I think we've done enough for tonight. I'm looking at the time and <laughs> we're vessels of mercy. We're worshipers and we are ex something. Amen. The alphabet of believers. Well, according to my alphabet counting, we only have two more letters to go. And if it's the Lord's will on next Wednesday night, we'll conclude this study of the alphabet of believers. But I pray that this has blessed our souls. Has it blessed you? Come on, type, type into the live chat if, you know, this word has helped you. Uh, this word found me right on time. Amen. You never know what people are going through. And that's why every opportunity God blesses us to study the word of God, we ought to take full advantage of it because God is growing us each and every day. All right, we appreciate you for studying here with us on tonight, the alphabet of believers. And um, we've been studying for a while now. I can't even remember what count this is, but you know, <laughs> it's in the description. And we thank God. Uh, for just uh, blessing our lives. Pray that this message has encouraged you as you continue to walk with the Lord uh, throughout the remainder of this week. Listen, if you'd like to contact us with further Bible study or Bible question, maybe partner with us in prayer, the information is there at the bottom of the screen. Don't hesitate to give us a call. Reach out to us because we'd love to hear from you. And now as we sign off on another Wednesday night, we want you to know, always remember, don't you ever forget that even in 2024, yeah, we love you. And there's not a thing that you can do about it. Be blessed in the Lord. And we'll see you again real soon. Take care. Have a wonderful week and be blessed. Good night. Be going through in your life.